Hi everyone, and welcome to this video where I'll show you how to set up an actual versus planned Gantt chart in Excel. This will be useful for planning purposes, as it will show whether your project tasks are currently on target or not. Currently, we already have our simple Gantt chart set up. Please see the video in the description below if you'd like to create a Gantt chart with progress bars like this one. This chart is currently illustrating the actuals, which are in columns C to G. However, we want to add separate bars to illustrate the planned start dates and durations showing in columns H and I. To do this, we're going to start by setting up our y-axis in column J. The rationale behind this is that in order to create the separate bars, we're going to use a scatter chart format. Therefore, in order for Excel to know where to position each bar, we need to provide y-axis labels. We have a total of nine tasks with the go live task at the bottom of our charts and the review procedures task at the top. Therefore, we can label them from nine at the top to one at the bottom like this. Now that our table is set up, let's move on to adding the separate bars to the charts. Firstly, right click the charts and then click select data. We're going to add another series and we're going to call this start date planned. We can leave the values blank for now. The purpose of this series is to reflect the additional planned bars. The next step will be to format this additional series into a scatter chart so that we can make use of the y-axis coordinates that we added earlier. To do this, right click the bars and then click change series chart type. As you can see, currently all of them are formatted as stacked bars. However, for the start date planned, we're going to change this to a scatter chart. Now we can apply the axis coordinates by right clicking the charts, clicking select data, and then clicking edit. For the X axis, we're going to use the start dates and for the Y axis, we're going to use our axis labels. Now Excel has returned these dots which represent the start dates. However, we want to see the entire duration. To overcome this, select the dots and then add error bars. We can remove the vertical error bars by selecting them and then deleting them. Let's now format the horizontal error bars by right clicking them and clicking format error bars. We're going to select plus for the direction and no cap for the end style. We'll also select custom for the error amount. Here we'll select the duration column for the positive error value and we'll leave the negative error value blank and click OK. As you can see, this has changed the width of our error bars to correspond to the duration. Now let's format the error bars to make them more visually appealing. We can go into the Fill tab and change the width to 7 points. We can also change the colour to dark blue. We also want to get rid of these dots here and we can do this by selecting them then going into marker and removing both the border and the fill like this. This already looks better. However, we need to make a few more changes. 
firstly, we need to change the width of the axials to align with the planned bars. To do this, select them and then click Format Data Series. We're going to increase the gap width to 100%. Equally, let's reduce the width of the error bars we have to show the percentage completion. We can do this by right clicking on them and clicking Format Error Bars. We'll then change the width to 8 points to make it a bit larger than the planned. Finally, we can remove the axis labels we have on the right as we don't need them. A few questions you may have. Firstly, why have we incorporated a blank row in our table in row 13? The reason for this is to make the chart less cluttered at the bottom. Secondly, you may be wondering how the chart adjusts if we change the values in the table. Let's try it out. If we decrease the duration for one of the plan tasks, you can see that the bar changes as well. Equally, if we change the start date, this adjusts the first bar as well as the others as they're linked together via formula. So that's how you can create a planned versus expected Gantt charts in Excel. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and subscribe to the Excel Hub for weekly Excel tutorials, techniques and examples.